الله فلا مضل له ومن يبدل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله سبحانه وتعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدع وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد My dearest brothers and sisters and young kids in, in, in the month of January 2017 two baby girls were born in Peshawar in Pakistan but these two girls they were no ordinary babies they were born in a very rare way they were born joint or conjoined twins at the skull at the head usually when babies are born and they are as they call Siamese twins they are usually joined at the chest or at the hip but these two girls who were called Safa and Marwa they were born they were born and their skulls were attached to one another such that they couldn't even see each other this is so rare that it's said to occur one in two million. Now their mother, whose name is Zayda, she never actually knew the state in which her babies were born because that pregnancy was delivered under surgery. And as soon as the children were born, they were taken into intensive care. So over the five days before the mother got to see her children for the first time, the nurses start to discuss how should we break the news to this mother that her children have been born in this, in this way. They decide to show her a picture to prepare, to prepare her beforehand. But subhanAllah, when the day came to see her babies for the very first time, you know what she said? She said, I never even saw them as being joined up. I saw that they were sent by Allah and they were a blessing to me. SubhanAllah. Now the doctors in Pakistan, they said that if we are going to separate them, the only way we can do it is such that one of them will have to die. One of them will have to lose their life. But the mother, including her brother and her father-in-law, they decided that no, inshallah there will be a better way. And we will want to wait. Now before I continue the story, what makes it even more remarkable is that before the birth of these two girls, this lady, this mother of this, she already had seven children, subhanAllah. And two months before she gave birth, her husband passed away of a heart attack. That was the decree of Allah. Now you can appreciate how much of a trial and test it must have been for this lady to give birth to two girls in this way. Now for three months they began to speak to people, seek advice. And it was the decree of Allah that word would reach a doctor here in London whose name is Dr. Awais Jilani. He heard about the plight of these two girls and he made contact with the mother over there in Pakistan. Now subhanAllah, this man, Dr. Jilani, he was actually born in the same village as these two girls. And he is the number one pediatric neurosurgeon in this country. When he found out about their case, he decided that he wants to help them, to bring them over because he believed that they had the facilities to do the operation and save the life of both of these kids. However, it wasn't going to be easy. First of all, they had to get the visa to bring them over. And secondly, the NHS were not going to pay for this operation. And it was going to cost somewhere in the thousands. But he helped them get their visas and they came over. The mother, the two daughters who are now one year old, and some of their family members arrived in London. Now the doctor had only managed to save up, or to raise up rather, a small portion of the amount required. And he was very worried. He began to ask people. And one day, subhanAllah, he was speaking to a friend of his who is a lawyer. And he said, you know, there are these, this is mother, and she had these uh, cold, uh, conjoined twins, and they have arrived in the UK, but the cost of the operation is in the thousands, we need to raise up the money. 
Now what happened is that this lawyer, as soon as he heard about the plight of these two girls, he phoned a very wealthy Pakistani businessman, whose name is Murtaba. And he said, you know, this is the situation, they need lots of money. And in that moment, that businessman said, you know what, whatever it costs, I will cover it. Because for me, it is a chance to save the life of two people. And I will not let this pass. So he put up all of the money. Now subhanAllah, this separation of these two babies was a very complicated affair. It was going to take three major operations. The first one happened in October 2018. And subhanAllah, this first operation, all they wanted to do was to try and separate the blood vessels that connect the two brains of the two babies and try to make sure that they wouldn't join up again. This operation took 15 hours, subhanAllah. But alhamdulillah, it was successful. The first stage was complete. Everyone was very hopeful. However, the second operation didn't go very well. In the middle of it, one of the two babies stopped breathing. And they, they presumed that it may have been a stroke. And so what they had to do is change their plan during the surgery and to try and cut things short in order to rescue her. When that second operation came to a conclusion, both babies were, babies were still alive. However, things had not gone to plan. That operation lasted 20 hours. The medical team, they had become so tired and fatigued that they all went home to rest that night. However, Dr. Jilani, the first thing he did when he woke up in the morning was to phone the hospital and to check on the health of the two girls. To his shock and dismay, the nurse said, one of the babies is no longer breathing. And she has come out in a very strange rash. So the doctor thought the worst. And in that moment he said, I collapsed onto the kitchen floor and began to cry. After everything we have done, has it come to the point that we have lost one of them? He couldn't control himself. And his wife took the phone and spoke to the nurse and said, you need to reach out to the other lead GP, the other lead surgeon rather, because my husband is in no state right now. After a few hours, he came to the hospital. He saw that both ch children were on the ventilation. And their mother and their family, they were making dua. They tried to do a few things and alhamdulillah, the second child who was in, whose heart rate was plummeting, they managed to bring her off ventilators and alhamdulillah, both of them were safe and sound. Right. Now the third operation, which is supposed to be the ultimate separation of the two. The day of that operation came and was brought forward by four weeks because the health was not too good of the children. That operation was underway and alhamdulillah it was going to plan and the moment came where they separated the two babies and the two children were separated for the very first time and taken into separate beds. Alhamdulillah they had reached this point. However, everything was not complete yet. You see, the two skulls of these children was not properly formed, nor did they have skin on their head. It's very difficult to imagine. So now the doctors split up into Team Safa and Team Marwa and they tried to graft the skin back on the head and to try and reconstruct their skulls. And this took another series of operations until finally the day came where this Dr. Jilani, he came to the mother. Speaking in Urdu, he told them that after a long journey, Alhamdulillah, things have become successful and your two daughters can be returned to. This mother... She broke down into tears and grabbed the hands of both of those surgeons and kissed them and thanked them for what they had done. Alhamdulillah, those two children are alive today. Brothers and sisters, why am I telling you this story? What has fascinated me about this story to the point that I want to share with you all, I'm sure many of you have heard it before, is that you can learn so many lessons from this story. Now as Muslims, we should be people who reflect over the world around us and take lessons and benefit. We should be people of reflection, of contemplation. People out there are very shallow. They see major things happening in life and they don't take heed, they don't take any lessons. 
Muslims are not supposed to be like this. Muslims are supposed to be people who take lessons. So what are some of the lessons that we learn from this story? The first lesson that we learn from this story is the station of the mother of in Islam. That Allah has placed such love, care and compassion in the hearts of mothers that they will travel the distance of the whole globe to try and save their children. And this is what Allah says in the Quran, وَصَّيْنَ الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حَمَلَتُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْنٍ وَفِصَالُهُ فِي عَامَيْنِ أَنِشْكُرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيْكِ Allah says, and we have enjoined upon children to be the best with their parents. Their mother, Allah says, carried the child from one stage of weakness after another. Let me think about this, subhanAllah. When a mother becomes pregnant, immediately she is hit with morning sickness and tiredness. And then that slowly becomes more weakness and pain. She starts to feel some pain in her legs. She cannot move properly. And then ultimately, the day where she delivers the child, the labor pains are so tough and excruciating. Allah says, all of this that she has done for you means that she deserves the best from you. The way you speak to your mother, the way you talk to her, the way you look at her, how you treat her. All of these things, Islam expects the very best. That is why we should ask Allah to forgive us for our shortcomings towards our parents. Every one of us is falling short when it comes to our mothers. Some of us are doing very badly. Some of us are not doing too well. All of us should ask forgiveness today and say, Allah, I will try better with my mother. Say, inshallah. Another lesson that we learn from this story is that when you help someone out, Allah in turn will help you. Our Prophet said, Man kana fi hajati akhihi, kana Allahu fi hajatihi. In Sahih al Bukhari, the Prophet said, Whoever helps out their brother, Allah in turn will help them. SubhanAllah. Now, when you think about the story, do you remember when that GP was having a conversation with his lawyer friend and the lawyer found up that businessman. In that moment, that businessman decided to do something amazing. And that was to try and help rescue the lives of these two babies. He never even knew of them, except that day. Now, in helping those two girls, do you know what he has done? He has guaranteed that when his time of need comes, Allah will be by his side to help him, subhanAllah. And this teaches us that we should be people that try to help others around us. If ever you see someone struggling, if ever you see someone in difficulty, make it your business to try and help them. Because in helping them, you are helping yourself. Because one day you will be in a time of need. You will need some assistance. And then you will wonder, who is going to help me? But Allah is saying, I will be the one to help you, subhanAllah. And a man once asked the Prophet Man khayrun nas. Tell me, who are the best people in the world? You know what he said? nas. He said, people who help others are the best of people, subhanAllah. That is why whenever someone reforms you, or someone asks you, you know what bro, you know what sis, I'm going through a very difficult time right now. Immediately tell yourself, what can I do to help this person? How can I be of assistance? Because in that moment, you will find that you have just helped yourself because Allah in turn will help you. May Allah subhanahu wa give us understanding. In the second part, I will share some more. Wa akulu qali hala wa astaghfirullah. Li wa lakum wa lisa'i muslimi fa astaghfiruhu. Inna muhu rahim. Alhamdulillah, was salat was salam ala ashraf in Abiyah, was salin, Abina Mohammedin, Wala Ali, or Sahi, and Marin, and Mabar. Brothers and sisters, one final lesson. You know that doctor, subhanAllah, Dr. Awais Jilani, may Allah reward him abundantly for what he has done. You know, because of the fact that he is, as I said, one of the number one neurosurgeons in this country, and this news has been picked up by the BBC. 
Whenever someone hears that this man helped out these, this lady and her children, you know what they will think? They will think he was a Muslim and he did this. That's what they will think. They will think this man, he should be respected and maybe his faith had something to do with being such an amazing person. And so, in helping those people, he has actually helped Islam and its reputation in the sight of mankind. He has given da'wah to people. And this teaches a very important lesson. Many of us are in the workplace. And the way you perform at work sometimes reflect how people think about your Islam. Our Prophet said, Inna Allah katab al ihsan ala kulli shayt. In a hadith that is authentic, he said, No doubt about it, Allah has prescribed or instructed excellence in everything. And what that means is that when you're at work, you should have a great work ethic. And you should strive to be the best employee or the best boss there is around. You know why? Because when non-Muslims look at you, they don't just see you, they see that you're a Muslim. So when you turn up to work late, or when you don't perform, or when you miss your deadlines, they say, that what Muslims, that's what Muslims are like. They're not very good when it comes to work. And that is wrong. That is a disservice to Islam. Rather, we should be like this doctor, where we try to be the very best in our field. Because when you become the best, then people say, you know what, maybe Islam helped him become the best. Maybe I should look into Islam. Maybe Islam should be something for me. Even subhanAllah, when England won the World Cup in cricket, they were speaking about the two Muslim men, Ma'in Ali and the other brother. And they were saying, look at these people. Their faith helped them to become the best at what they do. So Islam became the talking point. And this should be something of a reminder to us all. May Allah give us understanding. Finally, brothers and sisters, this Friday may be the first of the 10 days of the Hijjah. And as you are all aware, these 10 days are the best days of the year to perform good deeds. Deeds like giving sadaqah. Deeds like praying extra nafil prayers. Deeds like fasting. These deeds, if you do them on these days, Allah will value them more and Allah will give you rewards like never before. So please, from the Friday or the Saturday, depending on when the announcement comes, make sure you plan to do more good deeds in these days. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and accept all from us. Rabbana dharabna anfusana wa ilam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lana kuna lana min khasirin. Rabbana la tuzir qulubana ba'da ith hadaytana wa hab lana min tadunk rahma innaka anta al-wahab. Rabbana inna la amanna faghfir lana dhulubana wa qina adhaab al-nar. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adhaab al-nar.